Previously on Eager Eyes. To show change over time, you typically use a line chart. But when you're comparing different time series, the differences between the lines can obscure the changes within them. Index charts can help us that. They align values to a reference or fold the time axis on itself, or even do both. In addition to indexing values, with time series you often also want to compare different intervals, like the same quarter year over year, or the same day of the week over many weeks. Indexing on the time axis means folding time on itself, which gives you a different way of comparing data, and is kind of fascinating. Let's take a look. I'm Robert Kosara, also known as Eager Eyes. I talked about value index charts previously, <clears throat> uh, the more common type of index charts that index on the vertical axis. The same can be done on the time axis, but it's a bit more complicated by the fact that we think of time as being cyclical, or at least broken up into specific units, like years, weeks, days, and so on. In the typical time series line charts that I'm talking about here, this means indexing on the horizontal axis, also called the independent axis in statistics, instead of the dependent one. Indexing on time is actually more common than you might think. For example, age is basically an index. My age is indexed to when I was born, and it's different for you or somebody else. We can use age as a way to reference and compare things, like when you turned 18 or 21 or 50. Our age is the index value in this case, so for different people, these milestones happen at different absolute times, of course, when you unroll that back onto the timeline. Time index charts can be done in two different ways. One is easy to do and pretty easy to understand, and the other is a bit harder to grasp and a lot more of a pain to make in most software. The easier one is to go with the way we tend to break time down into units. But instead of comparing different time series to each other, you're now comparing one time series to itself, just a year or two or three earlier. Let's look at home prices again. This line chart of housing prices in Seattle goes from the beginning of 2018 to October of 2020. It's a continuous line, but it's also three years. So if I want to see how the years compare, I can break the line up and align the years to each other. Now we're looking at a time index chart, where the horizontal axis is the month of the year, and the year is encoded in the color. And we can see how 2018 and 2019 have very similar patterns, but 2020 of course looks quite different. So how is this different from a chart that shows prices in different cities over a single year? The difference is that I can unroll the time in this chart back into a complete timeline, which of course I can't with a chart showing different categories or, or cities, because its time series all run in parallel. And that's why this is really indexing on the time axis, and moving all the years over each other to make this chart. Once you look for these charts, they're everywhere. <laughs> There's an example uh, of camera sales from a report here by the Camera and Imaging Products Association, SIPA. It shows the number of digital stills cameras sold, which is what DSC stands for here, over two and a half years. Each year is a different color, and while camera sales of course vary through the year, we can compare them quite easily, and we can see that camera sales have been dropping. The top line is 2018, the black solid line below is 2019, and the orange line is 2020, which of course looks quite different. But you can see how the top two lines have very similar patterns, and how the 2020 line is different. If you don't care about business data so much, here's an example using data about my running. <laughs> With each line being a year, the horizontal axis being the day of the year, and the vertical axis the number of miles of run up to that point. It's the same as before, but a more interesting chart, <laughs> at least to me, and one that's actually quite useful to me to see how much progress I'm making. And as you can see, I did much better a few years ago than the last few, but this year, which is the orange line here, went quite well until the end of August when my running kind of fell off a cliff. I also have a climate change example here, just like in the previous video on value index charts. This one is not the typical way this data is shown though, but that's a good thing. This piece by Tom Randall and Blackie Miliosi for Bloomberg draws temperatures across each year, with each line being one year, just like the camera sales data or my running data. The fact that they seem to be stacking up like this shows how temperatures are increasing in a very direct and visually very striking way. So that was indexing on regular intervals like years, weeks, and so on. The even more interesting case is where we align things based on a criterion instead. And this is done to compare different events that don't occur on a regular basis, like recessions, or compare the trajectories of different products from the point when they were introduced. 
There are some examples of doing this in news graphics that I think are really interesting, like this one from the New York Times in 2008. They took the beginning of each bear market, which is measured here by looking at times when the S&P 500 index was dropping, and aligned all these times so they all started at the same point on the left. The horizontal axis is now the month within each bear market, and of course those are not spaced out in regular intervals across the years. So to make this chart, you have to subtract a different reference value on the time axis depending on where you are on, on your timeline. They also look at percent change from where the index was at the beginning of each one, which means that the vertical axis is indexed here as well. A different example is this chart showing market penetration for different technologies, from electricity and the telephone to social media and smartphones. They were of course introduced at very different times, so the key here is to align them at some point for a reference, and I think this was done when they had crossed 10% of the market. And this is basically an index on both axes as well, since the percentage here on the vertical axis takes into account things like the market size. And these lines also overlap in absolute time, unlike the bear markets example, where one has to end before another one can begin. But this makes it possible to get a sense of the speed at which different technologies made their way into people's lives, even though this chart covers around 150 years. Regular time index charts are very common and useful, and they're very easy to make in most software. The irregular kind of time chart is much less fun, be mostly because you have to have a list of reference dates and durations, and then you have to break up the data and align the intervals and so on. It can be done, of course, but it's pretty tedious. I can put together a video showing how all these things work in Tableau if there's interest. So let me know if that's something you would want to see. Line charts are pretty straightforward, but certainly very effective for time series data. Indexing, whether it's done on the value or the time axis, provides a different view that can be very helpful depending on what you're after. Whenever you're looking at data over time, consider transformations like indexing to get a different perspective on your data. There are links to the things I mentioned in the show notes below, so please take a look and, and check those out. And if you found this video interesting or useful, please subscribe to the channel and maybe even give this video a thumbs up. And feel free to post questions below, in particular if there's anything specific you want me to cover in a future video. Thanks for watching and take care.